Most people in an academic environment agree that copyright is an important subject. Following copyright law is as important as following any law. Copyright law may seem too limiting, but put yourself in the shoes of the creator. The basic premise of the law is to give creators the right to decide what happens to their work. In a nutshell, copyright law gives creators the exclusive right to profit from their work, just as you would like to do, and decide how it's used, even if that means not allowing others to use it. In the nonprofit academic setting, we are fortunate that the current law gives us an opportunity to use materials for the purpose, among other things, of teaching, criticism, and scholarship. This exception, called fair use, is outlined in Section 107 of the Copyright Act. Fair use bridges the gap for educators and students. Fair use gives us the ability to pull a recent article from the newspaper to invigorate a topic with current events, or read a poem that exemplifies a figure of speech. Fair use allows us to balance the interests of the author with the public interest. It is worthwhile to make the effort to evaluate your use of copyrighted materials and better understand the concept of fair use. The fair use exception to copyright law permits use without prior permission under certain circumstances. There are four factors to consider. First is the purpose and character of use. Is the use educational or entertainment? Even in an educational setting, it's surprisingly easy to cross over into entertainment. Are you showing a movie scene in a film studies class? That's probably fair use. Watching a whole movie in class strictly for fun is not. Using a comic strip in a presentation may be fair use if the artist has drawn a scene that exactly illustrates a critical point. However, use of a drawing for comic relief in a presentation is not. Next to consider is the nature of the work. Surprisingly, using an unpublished work without permission is less likely to be fair use. The simple act of committing your work to paper protects the author's copyright. If an author has chosen not to publish their work more formally, it would be risky to claim fair use. Also consider if the nature of the work is factual or fictional. Because copyright law does not protect facts or data, using a statistical chart favors fair use. It's okay to copy and use common data, like historical weather information, without permission. However, as soon as it's presented within the context of something else, like an analysis, it becomes creative. A good technique is to question whether any creativity went into the piece. Creative works are less likely to favor fair use. Factor 3 considers the amount or portion used. This is a guideline that many assume is more strictly outlined than it is. You may hear one chapter or 10% of the work is okay, but this is not always true. In every case, using a smaller portion is better. Do you need the whole chapter when an excerpt will do? The final factor is the effect on the potential market. Would a person have paid for the work if you had not provided it freely? This is why students pay for copies of required course readings, but may be provided with a supplemental reading in class. There is no yes or no answer to the question, is this fair use? The law itself merely gives guidelines. How these are interpreted will vary. Your job is to make a good faith effort. One final note. Properly attributing a work, even when used fairly, is a good academic habit. So, a special thanks to the Noun Project contributors who created many of the images in this presentation. For more help on understanding fair use and finding worry-free resources, visit the library.